Five. We've put up, there's a website, registration starts on the 21st, but we're working with unions because uh, when we look at MSMEs, it cuts across all sectors. Those in production, those in hospitality, uh, the media, um, private education providers, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, uh, we have on the other side the guaranteed of stake scheme, whereby we've identified nine priority items that we think uh, are being produced in most states. The federal government believes that formalizing the largely informal sector of the economy by registering over 240,000 businesses and capturing them in the corporate register will go a long way in ensuring the real sector is protected from economic shocks occasioned by the pandemic. In Abuja, Chumubi Walter Naji, NTA News. Let's take you to Borno State now, where the state government has called on the House of Representatives to support its reconstruction, rehabilitation and resettlement drive as a durable solution to insurgency. State Governor Professor Baba Gana Umar Zulum made the call when the House Committee on Northeast Development Commission, led by the chairperson Khadija Buka Abba Ibrahim, paid him a courtesy call at the government's house, Meiduguri. Mohamed Goni reports. The Northeast Development Commission, NEDC, was established in 2019 by the federal government to receive and manage funds allocated for human and infrastructural needs of communities devastated by the Boko Haram insurgency. The House Committee on Oversight Duties of the NEDC operations in the last one year, conducted around by the Managing Director, Mohamed Goni Al-Kali, assessed the first phase of completed 100 houses at Ngom, Mafa local government area of Borno State. The next phase construction of another 100 is underway out of a total of 10,000 housing program earmarked for the state as approved by President Buhari. The legislators also interacted with IDPs in camps at Customs House, Muna and Mohamed Goni Stadium where they also expected a clinic constructed by the commission. A leader of IDPs, Muhammad Abacha, informed the delegation of shortage of food supplies amidst other challenges of insufficient medication and classroom for school age children. Chairman of the committee, Khadija Bukar Abba Ibrahim, assured the displaced communities of government intervention, which the committee will facilitate. We will do what we can to see that more money is appropriated to the commission to carry out these things that need to be done. The members also inspected a warehouse where they directed NEDC to expedite action to distribute the food items to the needy in the camps visited, as well as the newly acquired and constructed offices and staff accommodation in Meduguri, Mohammed Ibrahim, NTA News. And in its continued efforts towards improving civil military relations in troubled areas, the Nigeria Defense Headquarters is targeting uh, over 5,000 people in communities of Zango Kataf area of southern Kaduna with free medical services. Sadatu Mohammed Kafa reports that the two-day exercise started with Kamuru Ikulu community series of violent crises in southern Kaduna in recent times, leading to mass killings and destruction of properties, the Nigerian Defense Headquarters has reached out to people in Ikulu community through free medical outreach to instill confidence among the people and engender military relations. We are here, doctors, nurses and pharmacies and other health uh, professionals to see how we can help the community to alleviate, just alleviate some of their medical challenges that they have in this community. Services rendered include the warming for children, eye tests and issuing of glasses, dental care, free insecticidal treatment for pregnant women, among others. Words of gratitude came from the community head as well as beneficiaries commending the effort of the Nigerian military towards addressing their health needs. Yet, they defend headquarters for this good culture, bringing a lot of people, materials to come and help our communities. We really appreciate it. We appreciate the military very well, because what we did not expect, we saw it. Pray for the defense so that the work they are doing, God will help them as far as I'm a retired soldier. The free medical service, which will last for two days, 
is expected to cover 5,000 people within the community. From Ikulu community, Zango Katav, local government area of Kaduna State, Saada Tumamad Kafa, ain't a news. In the meantime, the armed forces of Nigeria have continued operations across the geopolitical zones of the country, uncovering criminal conspiracies and recovering weapons in the process. Defense correspondent Naja Atutijani has details of this or the week under review covering the 10th to the 17th of September 2020. In the period under review in the northwest zone, troops of Operation Sahel Sanity acting on intelligence arrested a suspected illegal arms supplier with 890 rounds of the special ammunition concealed in his vehicle. Other items recovered include Nigerian police ID and the sum of 2,230,000 naira. Preliminary investigation revealed that the suspect is a major illegal arms dealer supplying bandits in the northwest. Similarly, troops conducting a stop and search operation in Gusau, Zamfara State, based on reliable intelligence, arrested one female and one male suspect, with nine parcels containing substances suspected to be cannabis and other illicit hard drugs. The air component of Operation Hajar Indachi also destroyed an armed bandit camp in Zamfara State. The airstrike was conducted as part of a new subsidiary operation codenamed Operation Wutandaji. In the northeastern zone, troops of Operation Life Yadoli repelled two different terrorist attacks. In Yobe State, neutralization of four Boko Haram terrorists and ISWAP fighters, while seven of them were arrested. In the north central zone of Operation World Stroke and Safe Haven, conducted several clearance operations to identify bandit camps. In the south south zone, troops of Operation Delta Safe and team from the forward operating base Pony immobilized an illegal refinery containing tanks filled with more than 307,000 liters of illegally refined AGO. Najatu Tijani with that update. Now Centers for Disease Control reverse controversial coronavirus testing guidelines as global confirmed cases now surpass 30.7 million. Justin Bem Unyi gives us an update on the pandemic. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reversed the controversial coronavirus testing guidance that said people who were exposed to an infected person but weren't showing any symptoms did not necessarily need a test. The new guidance says that people without symptoms who have been in close contact with an infected person need a test. Many public health specialists criticized the CDC's change in testing guidance in August for appearing to downplay the significance of testing people who don't have symptoms but who might be spreading the virus. And from the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Boris Johnson is spending a weekend considering whether to tighten COVID-19 measures in England after saying the UK was now seeing a second wave. The government is understood to be looking at a ban on households mixing and reducing opening hours for pubs. At least 13.7 million people, roughly one in five, of the UK population are already facing local restrictions. Former government advisor Professor Neil Ferguson said new measures were needed sooner rather than later. In the meantime, global cases of the coronavirus have now crossed 30.7 million as new infection rates remain stubbornly high in some countries and show early signs of resurgence in others. The US, India and Brazil hold the highest national case tallies. Together, three countries account for over half of all reported global infections. The dramatic benchmark comes as experts warn of uh, difficult fall and winter seasons ahead. Having a look at statistics released on Worldometer as at 6 p.m., confirmed global cases of coronavirus stood at 30,775,664. Out of these number, 957,676 were deaths and 22,408,990 were recoveries. And for a glimpse of the coronavirus in Africa tracker, 1,390,511 was a record for confirmed cases with 33,622 deaths and 
517 recoveries. This is just as the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC says Nigeria has so far recorded 56,956 confirmed cases with 1,094 deaths and 48,305 recoveries. This is where the update ends. Thank you for watching. All right, thank you, Justin, for that update, and uh, apologies for that uh, minor blip in that uh, report from Justin. All right, uh, you're watching the news on NTA International. We'll take a quick break now. Do you stay with us? We'll be back shortly. Thanks for staying with us. Now, stakeholders in the transport sector have commended President Mohamed Buhari for the release of the 10 billion Naira COVID-19 palliatives to uh, the transportation industry in the country. Kelvin Samuel reports that they are, however, hopeful that the funds will be judiciously distributed to relevant transporters for desired benefits to be actualized. The outbreak of COVID-19 caused untold hardship on citizens across the country as it grounded all sectors of the economy by shutting down people's means of livelihood, leading to the introduction of the unexpected new normals to ensure that the people are properly positioned for the economic recovery in the post-COVID-19 era. Federal Government of Nigeria has been making available policies as well as palliative that will help the quick recovery of the economy. One of such is the release of a 10 billion naira COVID-19 palliative to the Ministry of Transport, a gesture which is considered a welcome development by stakeholders in the sector. We appreciate and the money will go a long way. At least we will bring our union up. Uh, we appreciate the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on this kind of gesture. The period of pandemic has caused serious setback to the economy of this country and the transport sector in particular, which is the life wire of any, any state economy. Minister of State Transportation, Senator Bomishola Saraki, had in a meeting with the President, National Union of Road Transport Workers, Professor Tajudin Lawa, assured that the ministry has constituted a committee that will ensure transparency in the disbursement of the fund. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. All right, to other news now, and some communities in Sapele local government area of Delta State have raised an alarm over the environmental pollution caused by alleged damage to oil pipelines in their areas. Thelma Eliogu reports that residents are calling for justice from the concerned authorities. Weeks after the oil spill from an alleged damaged pipeline belonging to Seplat Petroleum Development Company, residents in Maka Street off Shell Road opposite the Mechanic Village in Sapele say their lives are in danger as a result of the water pollution. They claim some elements of hydrocarbon are in their shallow wells, which waters are now oily and black. There was presence of hydrocarbons in the, in the shallow well in the compound and the water has become a very polluted and can no longer be used for domestic purposes. More than a month now we don't have water. At a time they do give us canned waters to drink and we've been using that but water for the normal domestic things we don't have it. We don't have water to bathe, no water to wash clothes. The residents and business owners in the area appeal for government's intervention. According to them, the oil firm has shown minimal interest in effecting necessary cleanup and compensation. Water is very essential. 
and we are calling on federal government to come into our rescue to, to assist us to talk to CEPLAT so that they can act on time because we are not safe. Chairman Sapele Ope Community Development, Dr. Patrick Akamaba, said the community has held several meetings with the firm with a view to finding solutions to the problem. Your host community, you found oil in the wells, dug out wells. Got the demand. It doesn't take anything from you. Look at that. You can send relief materials like bottled waters, or you know what, uh, into bringing tanks where you can give them water. At least that's very thing that was affected. Let there be alternative for them to get water. Meanwhile, efforts to speak with the management of Seplat Oil Firm proved abortive. In Sapele, Thelma Eliok, NTA News. And as the rainy season intensifies with its attendant consequences of flooding, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has taken its 2020 flood mitigation response and recovery advocacy to Yobe State to avert loss of lives and property. Director General of the agency said considering this year's seasonal rainfall prediction and the annual flood outlook, it has become imperative for government to evolve strategies to minimize further losses. Yunusa Suleiman reports out flooding in Nigeria believed to be one of the major phenomena that is threatening the existence of many communities across the Federation despite efforts by relevant authorities and other stakeholders in and the populace on the need to adapt measures to mitigate and control the disaster. Available statistics obtained indicated that in Yobe State this year the flood disaster has claimed nine lives and destroyed many communities in 16 out of the 70 local government areas of the state. In a bid to strengthen collaboration and partnership in combating the annual disaster, the Director General of NEMA, Muhammadu Mohammed, was in Yobe State on an advocacy visit for government in the state to key into the 2020 National Flood Mitigation Response and Recovery Drive. This year, the highly probable flood risk areas in Yobe State include Gaidam, Bode, Bursari, Karasua, uh, Yusufari, Yusufari, Local government areas. Your Excellency, in view of the foregoing, I wish to request the state government to kindly take proactive and necessary mitigating measures in addressing these issues. Governor May Malabuni represented said at the onset of this year's rainy season, government through the state environmental protection agency had evacuated and cleared drainages and waterways in flood high risk local government areas. And this was in addition to the construction of waterways in towns and villages as part of measures put in place to control flooding in the state. The only has been doing this. In fact, as part of the total of state government to contain this flood, the government approved the appointment of local government sanitation committee in each of the local One of the major responses for this committee are to clear the analysis so to allow free flow of Highlight of the advocacy visit was the presentation of documents containing the 2020 seasonal rainfall prediction and the annual flood outlook to the state governor and the executive secretary of the state emergency management agency for scrutiny and adoption. In the matter, Yenusa Suleiman, NTA News. Now, a three-story building belonging to Excel College in Lagos has collapsed. A report says the building collapsed in the early hours of Saturday. Information gathered from officials of the school revealed that the building had previously shown signs of distress and the school was planning to renovate and refortify the structure. The three-story building has two wings conjoined. The wing that collapsed has seriously affected the second wing as visible cracks can be seen on the walls, pillars, and decking. Fortunately, no casualty has been recorded during the incidents. Emergency responders have recovered a dead body from the multiple road accidents which occurred at Anthony Inward Bagada in Lagos. Reports indicate that residents are lamenting that accidents are now becoming a weekly affair in the area. Now, Minister of Sports uh, says uh, Nigeria's sports policy is aimed at improving economic empowerment of Nigerians. Gift George is our guide on sports update. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dare, says 
Policies have been put in place to remodel the country's sporting industry from recreational to business oriented. Speaking to newsmen in Lagos, the minister maintained that the country has to emulate other nations who have used sports to ensure economic empowerment of their populace through private sector partnership. What I've done is to accelerate that process towards developing a business model around our sports so that this country can also try and try to reap this from sports as business. Nigeria Olympic Committee has joined the rest of the world to mark World Cleanup Bay in Lagos. Members of the Association of National Olympic Committees of Africa, ANOCA, and a global network organizations for the promotion of clean environments in collaboration with other interest groups converge on the National Stadium Lagos to mark the day centered on promotion of a cleaner planet for humanity. Take active part in reference and collection in one day as a way of raising awareness on the need to protect our environment. See that we are relevant as far as the National Olympic Committee is concerned. In football, Super Falcons captain Asisat Oshwala says gender should not be a major criteria in appointing the head coach of the senior women's national team, the Super Falcons. The eight-time African champions have been without a coach for almost a year after coach Thomas Denneby resigned his position with a year left on his contract. I don't think there's any problem if we have a female or a male coach. It's just a matter of bringing the best to the Super Falcons team. In the English Premier League, there will be four interesting clashes in week two of the 2020-21 season on Sunday. Southampton plays host to Tottenham, who are hoping to return to winning ways. Newcastle faces Brighton, Leicester City tackles Burnley, while the star match of the day sees Chelsea welcome defending champions Liverpool to Stamford Bridge. With sports update, Gifts George, NTA News. And that concludes the news at this hour on NTA International. Many thanks for watching. Remember to connect with the NTA and stand against rape and a rapist's be a star. I am Dennis at Digunloye.